Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a time clock in Excel using UTC, which is universal time. And this comes up every year. I get people asking me about this with daylight savings time. If you're doing employee time clocks and the employee shift goes over the time change, how do you deal with that? And I go through this every year. So we're going to show you how to do it in Excel this year. This year's question comes from David in Tallahassee, Florida, one of my platinum members. David says, you created a video a couple of years ago about daylight saving time. It's daylight saving time, by the way, people, not daylight savings time. Anyways, uh, and implementing it in Microsoft Access, which is what I do. Well, my employer still has us using an Excel spreadsheet to track clocking in and clocking out. Is there any way to achieve the same functionality in Excel, perhaps by associating it with a button that employees can click to clock in and out? Yes, David, absolutely. Pretty much any code that you can use in Access, you can use in Excel. I mean, there are some exceptions. Obviously, if it's, if it's Access-specific stuff, like looking things up from a table, you can't do that. But most VBA that you can get to work in any of the Microsoft Office applications works in all of them. Now, what David is referring to is a video I did about three years ago about daylight saving time in Access, which is pretty much what I just mentioned. And in the video is pretty much the same thing. It was a question from Paul from New York about the same basic thing. You got clock shift. You got employees that work over that time shift. How do you calculate it? And I've got a previous video that shows you how to build a time clock, right? Employee loads up the time clock, picks their name, clock in, clock out. And that's pretty simple, but that's local time. And if you know he clocks in at 1 a.m. and clocks out at 8 a.m., then you got a problem. So the way to solve this is to store UTC, which is Universal Time Coordinated. Basically, Greenwich Mean Time. It's what they use on like the International Space Station and stuff, so everything runs smoothly. All right, so we had two more fields to the table, right? Two more fields to our time clock table, and then we save them in UTC time. Now, there's source code that you can get online. This comes straight from Microsoft, in fact, and I have a copy of it in my code vault, which is free for everybody, this particular function, and I'll give you a link to it in a minute, and we'll walk you through installing it in Excel. But this is what basically goes out to your Windows system clock and says, hey, are you currently on DST or not? And then if so, it'll adjust based on your offset, right? Like I'm in Florida, which is Eastern time zone, so in standard time, we're minus five hours from UTC. And so this functionality can then determine what the current UTC is for your time zone. And like I said, this is code that we can install just fine in Excel as well. And so now finally, once all that's set, you clock in and it puts the UTC and the UTC out when you clock out. And it's pretty simple. So let's see how we do this in Excel. First of all, this is a developer level video. What does that mean? Well, we're gonna need some VBA to accomplish this goal. Now you'd think that Microsoft would add a function like UTC now, which exists in some other platforms. I think Power Automate has it or Power Query, but in Excel by itself without those extra add-ins, you gotta do it this way. Just like how we have to do it in Access. I'm not surprised that functions are missing from Access because Access is the redheaded stepchild literally of the Microsoft Office family but usually they give cool stuff to Excel first. So since we need some VBA to do this, if you've never done any VBA programming before, go watch this first. It teaches you how to get started with Excel VBA. You gotta turn on the developer tab and some other stuff. Go watch this first. It'll teach you what you need to know to get started, then come on back. All right, so here I am in Excel. We're gonna create a basic time sheet. We got our name, and of course you can make this as detailed as you want or not, right? There's the clock in, which will store the local time in, the clock out. The UTC in and the UTC out. And then we'll calculate our hours worked based on the UTC time in and out, right? Let's make this a little bit bigger. Okay. I always like to add a splash of color when I'm working. Makes things go a little bit better if you can see things clearer, right? All right, so the way it's gonna work is you put your name here and you can make this a drop down list if you want to. I've got whole other videos on making drop down lists. And now you're going to want to click a button over here to clock in and then another button to clock out for this particular row. Okay, we'll get the current time. We'll put it there and then we'll figure out what the UTC time is. Now, let's make the button first to just get the regular time. Let's go to our developer tab. 
We're going to click macros. Let's give the macro a name. Let's call it clock in. No spaces. And then click create. The VB window opens up. We're now in module one, clock in right here. Okay. Now I want to say whatever row I'm currently in, whatever row I'm in, right, in column B, put the current time, current date time technically. So we're going to say range, and that's going to be B and active cell dot row. That's the row that you're in. Dot value equals now. Okay, that's the active cell dot row. So the row goes here in column B. And while we're at it, let's format it the way we want. Now, I like universal time. I like the ISO date time format. If you want to learn more about that, here's a video I did. It's basically year, month, day. It's completely unambiguous, so anyone anywhere in the world knows what it is. I'm on a mission to change everyone to using this time format and to getting rid of daylight saving time. I hate, oh, I hate daylight saving time. Okay, so we're going to say that same cell dot number format equals, and what do you want to format it as? Y, 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 dash, M, M, dash, D, D, space, H, H, colon mm like that now my access people where are the access people in the house access people know that in access we have to use n for minute because m is already used for month but in excel it's different in excel they this for backward compatibility so they use m as well excel is smart enough to know that if it's paired with the h use minutes i know it's dumb okay so that's going to put the current date time in that cell and set the number format. Okay, now let's make a button and assign that to this macro. So save that. All right, now we gotta save this file. You can see all the other Excel videos I've done in here. Um, you gotta save this guy as an XLSM file, a macro enabled file, otherwise your code won't run. Okay, and you can see I was playing with it earlier today. There's my old one. So I'm gonna call this one daylight Saving time dot XLSM. It's a macro. Okay, now we can assign it to a button. So let's come back over here and let's go to the developer tab. And then right here under insert, under form controls, pick a button right there, that guy. And then draw a button out somewhere over here. Okay, and we're going to assign it to the clock in macro. Hit OK. And while you're at it, change the caption, right? Clock in. All right. Now click in the row. Make sure this is a this is a training thing for the user. You got to click on that row and then hit clock in. Boop. And there you go. And you got to make it wider, obviously, so you can see it all. And there it is. Make these guys wider too. There. All right. And we can do the same thing for clock out. All right. This time though, since you got this already started, just come back over here and we're just going to copy this whole thing. Watch copy, paste. And we're going to make this clock out. And the difference here is it's going to be in column C. And yeah, you could pass it as a parameter. There's all kinds of things you can do. I'm keeping it simple for today, folks. My philosophy with Excel is I like to keep my programming examples as simply as I can, as simple as I can in Excel, because most people who use Excel don't really necessarily want to be programmers. If you did, you'd do something like Microsoft Access. No. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was, that was a dig at Excel users. My bad, my bad. I love Excel too. I've been using Excel longer than I've been using Access. Um, and I've got some great stuff that I do in, in Excel, like stock portfolio stuff that you can't do in Access. In fact, I've got my Access databases sometimes opening in Excel in the background and using them because Access lacks the functionality. Anyways, now we got clock out written. Now we can make another button, right? We come back over here. Now, you can't click on this guy to select it, so you got to right click on it. And then what I do is I click on the border like that. I go control C, copy, click over here, control V, paste. And then while it's still selected, drag it next to it like that. Right there. All right, right click and then format mac or assign macro and then pick clock out and hit OK. And then you can change the little caption to clock out. And then again, make sure you're in the right row, hit clock out. OK. So that's working. Left align all that stuff. All right, now 
Let's get to the meat and potatoes of the video, the UTC stuff. For the UTC stuff, you're going to have to come to my website and get this code. It's all right here. Now, this is all straight from like, I did a little, I did some modifications down here, but this is mostly straight from Microsoft. All right, I'm sure if you Google it, you can find it somewhere else. I'll put a link down below in the link section. It's called the DST code. All right, daylight saving time code. Um, but this we have to put in our module so that we can find, figure out if the computer is currently on daylight saving time or not. So hit copy right there. That'll copy it to your clipboard. Come back to Excel, go back to VB. And in your module, I'm going to come right up top here and just paste all that stuff in. All right, there you go. And I'm not going to go through explaining all this stuff. I don't even explain all of it in the access video. Just sometimes it's like it's like driving a car. You don't have to know how every little bit and piece under the engine works in order to drive the car, right? This is just stuff you need. Even me as a programmer, I don't. I sometimes copy code from other programs and just you, you just work with it, right? It's bits and pieces. Okay, give it a quick debug compile. Make sure you copy and paste it everything correctly. Now we can use this function here called current UTC that gets the current universal time. Okay, so down here in our clock in and clock out, we're just going to copy this, copy, paste. All right, now clock in is in D and clock out is in E. So we're going to say right here, D is going to be equals current UTC, like that. And then we copy this and we put it down here for the clock out. And we change this to E. There you go. Save it again. Debug compile. Always give it a quick debug compile. All right. Now, ready? Click. Clock in. Boom. Clock out. Boom. There you go. And they're the same because it's. I just clicked them at the same time. There we go. Okay. All right. And there's your current local time and the UTC time. And then again, there's all kinds of other things you can do. You can protect the sheet. You can make drop down lists. You can all, whatever. You can do a check to see if there's a value here already and warn them, hey, you've already clocked in. Are you sure you want to overwrite that? Millions of things you can do. It's just how much time you want to spend doing it. Hours worked is pretty easy. For that, I would use the UTC because that's the whole point of this exercise is because the local time is going to reflect that daylight saving time change, whereas UTC will not. So this will simply be in Excel, just like in Access, a unit of one equals one day. So to figure out the hours worked, it's going to be equals in parentheses, time out minus time in, right? Because the more recent value is going to be higher. And then we have to set so that's in days. So now we have to multiply that by 24 to get hours. And there's your number of hours worked. If you want to see a real value here, just change this to, let's say, uh, let's change this to one o'clock p.m. And we'll change this one to, uh, I don't know, 5.30 p.m. There you go, four and a half hours. See? There you go. That's how you do it. It's not that hard. The toughest thing is all this code up here, which, yeah, you don't have to write that. Just copy it. <laughs> and then the rest of it's all little bits and pieces. Now, everybody always asks me, well, how do I take existing dates and times and convert them over to UTC? Well, unfortunately, there is no easy function for that. This is a function that you can generate the current time because it can look at your system's clock and determine from Windows whether or not you are currently in daylight saving time or not. And then it can apply this offset accordingly, right? It comes down here and says, all right, if we are in daylight saving time, right? Right here, get this, get time zone information from the computer. Okay, and if it is, then it applies daylight saving time. If not, it doesn't. If you want to do this with existing times from previous time clock data that you have, you're going to have to use something a lot more complicated. I recommend using an internet time server. There's a lot of different uh, websites that you can use. They have APIs, which means that you can send them a request for information and they'll give you the data back and they can do that calculation and figure it out for you. Now, in the extended cut for my original access video, I do show you how to get the current time from worldtimeapi.org, which is an internet server. All right, and it's basically making a call out to a web API and then they return a value to you. There are other APIs you can also use that you can send it a date and time and a location. It will also return the UTC for you. So there's lots of different things you can do. Check this video out for more information. Again, this is for my, my members. If you want to learn more uh, about things like those drop down menus and stuff that I talked about, my Excel Expert Level 10 class, 
I cover making custom drop-down lists and all kinds of other stuff. Lots and lots of Excel lessons on my website. I'm currently in the process of updating them. I should have some new versions out pretty soon. And of course, if you wanna see more Excel tech help videos, let me know about it down below. But that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something, my friends. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions, and other perks. Gold members get access to download all of the sample spreadsheets that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use and more. Platinum members get access to all the previous perks, plus all of my beginner full courses and one new expert course every week. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for Excel. I also teach Word, Access, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. Now, when you do sign up to become a member, I need you to email me and tell me I want more Excel. The vast majority of my videos are from Microsoft Access because that's on my focus for the past few years. However, I'm happy to add more Excel videos if I get more Excel members. So make your voice heard and I'll make lots more tech help lessons for Excel. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments that you have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon to select all and receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? If you're watching this video on YouTube, just click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other related videos, additional information on the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. If you have not yet tried my free Excel Level 1 course, check it out now. It's over 90 minutes long, and it covers all the basics of using Microsoft Excel. And if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1, and it's free for all members of my channel at any level, even supporters. Just email me and let me know you signed up as a member. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by and check out my Excel forum. Be sure to follow my blog, and of course you can find me on Twitter and YouTube. And as always, thanks for learning with ExcelLearningZone.com. I'm Richard Rost. See you next time.